Can limp bag membrane traps be the answer for home studio owners who are looking for a better bass response in their room? My initial limp bag prototype testing does appear to suggest they can improve the low end, as well as other areas. Today I'll cover how to make these cost-effective limp bag membrane traps completely DIY with no building experience necessary. I'll talk about placement and we'll talk through my results so far. Be sure to like the video and hit that subscribe button. Let's get into it. What excited me most was how simple and relatively inexpensive these traps are to build using insulation and a plastic cover. Since testing out the treatment for myself, the low end feels way more solid. I can hear more depth and I'm pleasantly surprised to be able to easily pick out mistakes in my old mixes. Limp bags are said to work best in the pressure zones of your room, that is, against all the walls and ceiling. My treatment upgrade path so far has been placing the limp bag panels from floor to ceiling to cover as much of the walls as possible. There's a few areas left to treat, including the ceiling, but material supply shortages have put those plans on hold for now. At this point in time, I'm not concerned with aesthetics. All that interests me is the accuracy of the sound in this room. Now, because these panels are reflective, you must place non-reflective absorption in front of them. Once I have more supplies, I'll be building a wooden frame to hold the limp bags in place, a section of soft insulation bats in front of that, and then some fabric in front of that to finish off the look. You can see behind me that none of it is anywhere near complete, but as a prototype, as a proof of concept, check out these results. So my treatment beforehand was nothing on the back wall, just some freestanding panels on legs, a skyline diffuser sitting on a small table, DIY tube traps down the side walls, front corner super chunks, a ceiling cloud above the mix position, and front wall mid-high treatment, about 30 centimeters or one foot depth. For my current treatment, I pulled the tube traps out from the wall, placing limp bags behind them floor to ceiling. The tube traps, which are stacked one on top of the other, are then pushed up against the limp bags so that they hold the limp bags in place. It was too difficult to pull out my super chunks so they stayed where they were, and then I just treated the area in between them. Again, this was floor to ceiling. Then I rebuilt my front wall using the same materials I originally used, with the wall now even deeper into the room. On the back wall, I put a single layer of limp bags floor to ceiling and extended that around to the rear side walls, which were previously untreated. I then placed normal insulation in the corners to make temporary super chunks plus my skyline diffuser back in the middle of the wall sitting on the small table as it was before and any remaining insulation that I had left over I placed that on top of it. Lastly the freestanding panels were used to keep pressure on the temporary wall and just hold it together. The limp bags themselves were secured with nothing more than gaffer tape against the wall as they're relatively light. So this is before treatment the X axis is decibels SPL, Y is frequency, and the Z axis is decay time. On the after treatment measurement, you can see the dramatic reduction in the response of the room. The waterfall falls off more sharply, which is great. You can see how much flatter the overall frequency response is, especially in the lower frequencies. The limp bags have performed the audio equivalent of plastic surgery on my low end smoothing it out and making for a much flatter response. I decided to adjust my speakers further and found that through even better placement, I was able to achieve a flat response to within plus or minus 5 dB SPL, which is the best I've ever been able to get in this room. So it's become a lot better in both the time and frequency domains. The decay time is much shorter and the frequency response is a lot flatter. It sounds really tight in the lows and the sound stage just has this incredible depth that I just wasn't able to sense before. 
Now, the process to construct these traps varies, but here's some examples of professionally designed and commercially available products. For the DIY version, I simply used some heavy duty garbage bags, some soft insulation you might use to insulate between the studs inside a wall, and some clear packing tape. I used these particular products, Knauf Acoustic Bats, 1160 millimeters by 580 millimeters by 90, and that's the 2.5 HD stuff. Grunt heavy duty cleanup bags, size 831 mil by 1140 mil, 158 liter capacity. And then I've got Paint Partner clear packaging tape, 48 mil by 48 meters. To construct a single panel, I placed two bats on top of one another, then carefully slid a garbage bag over the top and then one over the bottom, being careful not to deform the bats. You then seal off the bags with the clear tape to ensure that the inside remains airtight. Should you tear any holes in the bags during handling or installation, either replace them or patch them over with some of the clear tape. Place these bags on all walls, being sure to add a non-reflective bat layer in front. I used the exact same insulation used inside the actual limp bags themselves. After that, put a breathable fabric over the top to finish them off and you're good to go. I recommend super chunks for the corners in front of the limp bags. When I'm able to get more supplies down the road, I shall post an update. I suspect having a double layer of limp bags on the rear wall would further improve my room, but this is something I'm yet to test out. Please post any questions you have below, and if you do try these out, let me know if it helped you. Happy mixing, and feel free to browse these other videos on my channel. Thanks for watching.